Hi, so recently I was working on quite a complex project for an upcoming video on this channel and I was looking at one of the effects tracks in the project and I wondered is this actually being used at this moment? And if so, which channel is using this effects track? Well, in following up on that question, I kind of rediscovered the routing navigation, which is part of the Cubase settings, and figured it would be worthwhile to make a video about it. Because I think it's a lesser known feature in Cubase, but it's oh so convenient when you need it. So, let's go. So let's dive right into Cubase to have a look at the project I was talking about. So as you can see, there's lots of vocal tracks. Electric guitar, acoustic guitar, keyboards, bass, percussion, drums. And then all of this repeats again, because in this project I'm actually doing two parallel mixes in different ways of the same song. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to know what that's all about. But you can imagine in this case that there's a lot of channels. Let's have a look. If I look at the mix of you, I see there's 144 channels in the mixer. And that means the routing can also get quite confusing. Now normally where you can see the routing in the mixer view is over here in the top row and that's because I have enabled the routing rack to show in Cubase over here. So on the top row over here you can see that for all channels, let me zoom in a bit, you can basically see the input routing and where this particular channel is going to, so the output routing. In the project view you can also see this by selecting a channel and then over here you can see the input routing and the output routing. So where the output of this channel is going basically. However if you want to answer the question which you had in the intro like which tracks are using my effects track. Let's have a look. If I go back to the mixer view and I for example select this effects track, long delay. Yeah, then you basically have to manually check in the sense where you are sending to long delay and if you are sending to long delay which can be quite confusing and error prone. You may miss something, right? But fortunately there is another way and that's via the channel settings dialog in Cubase. So let's have a look how you can get that. So taking the example of the long delay, for example, in the mixer, you can click the E button over here to get to the channel settings dialog. It's also possible to go again to the long delay channel over here and then click the E button over here. That also provides you with the channel settings dialog. And another option is to click the E button over here on the channel itself. Now the part of the channel settings dialog that we're interested in is this part over here, which is part of the toolbar in this dialog. Because this middle field over here is showing the name of the channel that you're currently seeing the settings of, which is also repeated over here in the title bar of this dialog window. However, on the left side, you can see all the inputs that are going to this channel. And currently you see that there's no source so indeed, the long delay on this effects track is not actually being used at this moment. So I could get rid of this track. Now other things which you can see over here is the output of where this track is going. And if you click on this button, you can basically reroute to where the track is going, but that's not what we want to do. We want to see where the output of this long delay is going at the moment without changing it. And then you can push this little arrow over here. And if it's only going to one output, then you would immediately navigate to that output. But since there are now two targets, you can click here. So it's basically going to the mixing bus of this project, but it's basically also going to a reverb. So this delay is also used as the input to a reverb effects track. So let's now actually do this for a track which does have some inputs. For example, let's take this guitar track over here. If we open the channel settings for that, you can see that this guitar channel takes its input from left stereo in. So this is used when I try to record on this channel, it's taking its input from left stereo in. C, E guitar 3 with a 57, probably the mic that was used. And you can see that there are three targets for this. It's going to a short delay, probably an effects track. It's going to an instrument plate, probably an effects track. And it's going to a bus called C, E guitars. And by selecting one of these now, you're actually navigating to that channel. For example, let's say we're going to see e-guitars. You can see that we're now looking at the channel settings of the e-guitar group channel. And if you look at the sources of this group, you see that these four tracks are actually routed to this group channel. And you see that the e-guitars group channel is routed to a group channel called C-Bus. And by the way, because we're now looking at the e-guitars group channel, you, you can see that it also got selected over here in the project view. It's basically the group channel where all e-guitars are routed to. Now, if I click on this arrow again, I'm navigating towards the mix bus, which you see over here, it's selected in the project view. And this bus is finally ending up in stereo out, which is my main stereo out, which I use for exporting the mix. And again, you can see over here that all of these tracks are routed to the C mix bus. We can go back to the e-guitars again. 
which makes us end up in the group. We can even go back to another group, which is routed to the e-guitars, which is called white guitars. And we can go back one more step, which is e-guitar one blend, which is just an audio track that contains some guitar recordings. Yeah, so I think these features are all very convenient to navigate the routing in the project. Okay, and by now, if you feel this video has given you any value, then please give it a big like so it gets shown to more people. Subscribe to the channel, and if you ring the little bell icon, you'll get notified when I post another video. You can also use the super thanks button below if this has been super useful to you, or use any of the affiliate links in the description to buy any items at these stores. And you can buy anything at these stores via the affiliate links. It doesn't have to be the items that I'm linking to. But if you then buy anything at these stores, I will get a small commission without any additional cost to you. So let's get back to the video. Now that we're at this, I want to show you a couple more things. And one thing is that you can also show the faders of the whole chain after the currently selected channel. And that's by pushing this button, show output chain. And here you can see that e-guitar one blend is routed to the white guitars group. That group is routed to the e-guitars group. That group is routed to the bus. And the bus is finally routed to the stereo out channel. So you basically now have an overview of the whole chain. And if you want to quickly navigate to any of those channels, you can basically just push the E button over here. and you end up all the way finally in the stereo out channel. Now let's go back to one of the guitar channels, because what you may also have noticed if I navigate this way, the selected channel in the project view also changes. As soon as I change the channel that is showing in the channel settings dialog over here. If you do not want that to happen, then you can disable this via edit preferences, editing, project and mix console. You can turn off sync selection in project window and mix console. And what you now notice is that you can select another channel in the channel settings dialog and the selected channel in the project view stays exactly the same. Now there is a different setting for the mix console because when I select another channel in the channel settings dialog, this one, you can see that in the mix console, the selected channel is still synced with the selected channel here in the channel settings dialog. If you don't like that either, then there's an option here in the functions menu of the channel settings dialog, which has follow E buttons or selection changes. If you disable that, then you can freely navigate in the channel settings dialog and your selected channel in the mixer window stays as it was, in this case, the C bus group channel. Now, if you like these kind of deep dives into Cubase features, then you're also going to like this video, which is about advanced automation in Cubase. Have a look, enjoy, and see you soon.